In this video, I'm going to show you a fully modeled timber roof made of a truss frame structure. And the purpose of this video is to give you an overview of how it's been modeled in Revit for an L-shaped building. I want to show you how one set of trusses is joined to another set of trusses and you're going to see all of the intricate details in how it fits together. Let's get started. Someone asked if I could do a video of modeling a truss roof for buildings with an L or T shape. As I mentioned earlier, in this video, I'm going to show you the model so that you can get an understanding of how everything connects, how it fits together, and how it's designed. I've modeled this frame with intricate detail right down to a millimeter point of accuracy. There's a lot to go through for showing a step-by-step -step tutorial for this. So I'm releasing this as an early sort of preview. I'll be releasing another video soon showing you how to model this. For those who would like to support this channel, I'm making this model available to buy on my website so that you can get a closer look and navigate every bit of detail yourself. You can use it as something to get a closer look on while I'm modeling it in Revit. Your support helps with the resources and licenses that make the videos on this channel possible. Well, let's not waste any time. Behind this tiling roof is a roof frame structure that supports it all. And before we go into that, I'm going to show you as much detail as I can. So if I pan this 3D model around, you can see that it is modeled nice and cleanly. And everything is in proportion and fits well from the outside. Now normally, in real life, you'd have some kind of cover uh, covering over this, but I've left it exposed because this is about a timber roof. So I'm going to hide the tiles now so we can see the roof underneath. Okay, there is our truss frame roof for an L-shaped building. Now let's go through it bit by bit so i'm gonna hide these walls just so we can see it a bit more clearly i'll hide the one okay so uh, if we go into the plan view this is the shape of building that i've made so it's this is an l-shaped building and inside the L-shaped building, I've put a supporting wall for the trusses that are going to span along this way. So I've put one supporting wall in the middle there so that the trusses that span along this direction can rest on this wall and transfer all the forces into the foundations which disperse it throughout the ground. Okay, so back into the 3D. Now, what I've done here is I've used a simple fink truss and I've loaded this in by going into structure and using the truss tool so when you select truss you go into load family and you should be able to find it in your list of in your metric library list okay so if, if you go down into structural trusses you'll find all of these trusses think truss a prat truss but the one i used just for a simple uh, just for a simple demonstration was the simple think truss and that's what you see here and also when you load in the think truss you uh you're going to need to load in the material as well otherwise it's going to it's going to use steel beams to try and make your truss and it's going to look very messy uh, you, you just go into insert load family actually even better you go into beam and you load family from your beam and just load all of these woods just highlight them all and hit open or you can highlight them one by one and because you, you, there's some specific dimensions that you'll need to open but it's Revit you can create your own sort of dimensional lumber 
in any size you want and in these in the truss here that's a group because this is an end gable ladder which is used for as an overhang I've seen these in real life trusses when I pass them by while driving around but if I, if I select the member here let me actually uh, use a section box <coughs> and get this out of the way okay that's a bit clearer so the members used here are 38 by 235 pieces and this spans all along the outside as well as the internal W pieces now you'll notice that this truss is cut neatly and nicely it's cut into this shape which can fit together in real life and there is a trick on how to do this there's a trick on how to cut these uh, beams this way and I'm going to show you how to do that as well so the trusses are connected with purlins and internal rafters which run along the inside and stiffen them up keep them stiff stiffly braced and there's a couple here and I've modeled it this way because because I followed a truss drawing detail in a construction handbook and the trusses are resting on a timber piece which is resting on the block walls so these trusses will be fixed into this timber piece with a metal fixing and the timber will be fixed into the block wall on the outside we have battens that go along the trusses and this is for hanging the t roof tiles on and before we go on to the part which we're anticipating I just want to show the end of the truss set and it ends by a gable ladder and this this is uh, made this way because it's an overhang it works as an overhang and you see this everywhere wherever you see house construction you will see a gable ladder end on a roof uh, for an overhang and they connect to this ridge nice and neatly as well as the other members of the uh, truss so you'll see that these are cut to the ridge and we're gonna and I'm gonna show you how I've modeled it like this there's a special way of cutting beams and it's quite clever you might also notice that uh, some of the members are clashing with the brick wall now they're not actually clashing uh, in real life when it's built up these will actually be resting inside the walls for support so this truss structure will be supporting the walls and the walls will be supporting the truss structure all right now for the part we're anticipating so when i drew the trusses i've spaced them out at 600 millimeters apart and when they reach to this part i've put preference for the trusses on the longer side so that means the shorter side is going to connect to the longer side and because of this preference i've tried to keep the trusses fully modeled along up to here and on the shorter roof i've cut the trusses down to accommodate the tail of these trusses we can't have anything clashing but this works roof tiles can be hanged all the way up to here so now i'm gonna hide some things so that this is a bit more clearer because the roof trusses stop up to here so let me show you in plan view let me hide this so in plan view you can see there's trusses all along at 600 millimeters apart and it ends right up to here 
simple thing truss and from this point instead of using trusses to connect I've modeled a timber frame I've modeled a middle joining timber frame to to connect the truss structure on this side to this side and I'll show you in 3D I'm just going to hide these battens to make things a bit more clearer so select all and I'll hide them away just so we can see things a bit better okay hopefully that's easier to see you can see how this is just a normal structure it's not a truss it's just a normal roof structure and these rafters here they rest they rest standing up along the truss edges these rafters are connected up to the ridge so the ridge is resting around here with these rafters resting this whole structure onto these set of trusses and you'll notice that uh, the trusses down here I've cut them back to accommodate the space in here and this side looks quite easy let me show you the other side now this side was tricky to model I had to show preference to this side of the roof and I wanted the overhang to be complete so the overhang is going all the way down the gable ladder end it goes all the way down and it's assumed that these will be fixed into the brick wall now these are not clashes these are the truss members fitting into the brick wall and I've attached this wall I've attached the top of this wall to the bottom of the roof so it's ended up becoming shaped like this for the roof to sit on then the rest of the trusses are modeled as normal up until the end now something that I've noticed in some people's models is that these these pieces they're laid flat against the uh, edges of the trusses here rather than standing up now if you have them standing up they're stronger but if you have them flat they seem to fix better I would think this is the better way to do it I've been told that this is a better way to do it so yeah and uh, let's show you where this truss where this ridge is resting so as you can see the ridge has been coped to this truss that looks about two-thirds of it resting on the truss here now two-thirds less than two-thirds of this resting on something wouldn't be enough but I've left it like that because everything is joined to these as well which are helping to support everything else and you can see that these timbers are cut nice and perfectly to fit with these rafters what else can I mention at this point okay I've, uh, I'm trying my best to show you in depth here every single kind of detail so that you might be un so that you're able to understand how it's modeled but this is how this set of trusses will rest against this one and it'll be fixed down by nails and how this is modeled so uh, we have our truss on this side this is our truss and then on this side it's just it's just this rafter joined onto the truss rafter 
and then this is bridged with the same kind of pieces I think there's seven along this bridge one two three four five six seven eight it's eight of them and then uh, we have the ending rafter connected to these and an overhang can be laid on them so that's it I just wanted to show you how it looks and all the intricate details in it and uh, very soon there'll be a video showing you how to model this out step by step I'm working on that and should release it very soon so that you can model this by yourself modeling this takes a while so it's gonna be a bit of a while before I release that video but I'm gonna be working on it as much as possible every day to try and get it out as soon as possible but hey if you want to uh, if you want this model and you want a closer look yourself you want to pick at bits and uh, move them around and see what happens so you can see quite clearly how it's fixed here so the common uh, the common fixed point between this structure this joining structure and the trusses is this ridge this is the spine of all this structure <coughs> also in another video I'm going to be doing technical drawings for a truss drawing showing you how to produce a drawing that a manufacturer can use to manufacture trusses if you enjoyed the video share it with a friend I'd appreciate it and if you're not already subscribed, there's a round channel logo on the screen and you can click that to subscribe. And in the video description below, you'll find a link to my website, technicaldraft.com, where you can buy this model for a closer look. Or you can click on one of the videos over here and watch another video. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video.